Hey! Blowers and Blowers! Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry and Moors and Blowers! Good afternoon. It's right around noon. Some nut wanted to buy my Atlas snowboard. I have it listed for 225. He offers me a hundred. So I said, a hundred? I could sell the engine for a hundred, right? And so he's like, I said, I need to get rid of it. We don't have any snow, right? We were supposed to get a couple of inches the other day. What happened? We got like a dusting, maybe half an inch, and it didn't even stick on the ground. The minute it hits the ground, melted. So there's no accumulation whatsoever. So again, I wasn't able to test this thing. This is an electric snowblower that I got to do a review. I'm done with the review. I just need to test it in the snow. So I'm putting it on hold until we get some snow. Rumor has it we're supposed to get some uh, Sunday into Monday. Maybe. Again, maybe. So just to keep track, so far this season, we've had one snowstorm of eight inches. Got a package in the mail the other day. It's a gift from a subscriber. Sometimes when I'm working on my stuff, you guys see the tools I need. This is my um, Harbor Freight Tools Chicago Electric Grinder. I got it for $9.99. It's usually $11.99 with a coupon. It's like nine bucks plus tax. Anyway, I've actually fixed this before, once uh, before, but and I didn't know why I did it, <laughs> because it's $10. Throw it away and get another one, you know what I mean? But anyway, when I plug this thing in and I click it like that, sometimes you gotta wiggle it just for the contacts to touch and it spins. Sometimes you gotta bang it on the floor. So, sometimes I'll write in my videos, I really need to get a new grinder. And usually that's an indication <laughs> that I might need something. And some of you subscribers are very generous and uh, are loyal followers to the channel. And they send it to me. So, got this in the mail the other day. And this is no slouch. This is a Porter Cable Grinder. Porter Cable is a much, much better brand than a Harbor Freight Chicago Electric brand. You know what I mean? Very, very nice. And it has the handle as that one did, but I took it off. And also it has the um, cutting wheel guard. I took the cutting wheel guard off of that one because I see people just not use the guard because sometimes the guard can get in the way of cutting, which is true. But then again, it's dangerous too because on the cutting wheel, you could slice your finger off in a second or less than a second, you know? So I might. Moving forward, I might try to be more safe as I am getting older. Even though you think that when you get older, ah, oh, hell, I'm already 52 years old. I'm not going to need that finger. How many more years do I have left? 10, 15, 20 if I'm lucky? You know, life is about to end for me. That's what you think sometimes, you know, and it's depressing, of course, but it's not like aliens have invaded the earth and give you the pill to immortality, you know what I mean? And cures to everything, which I'm still waiting for, by the way. But anyway, moving forward, I'm gonna try to keep the guard on there when I use this. But uh, anyway, this is from my loyal subscriber, longtime subscriber, Ernie McDonald. He said he was sending me something, so I looked out for it. Anyway, let's see if there's a note in here. A gift for you, Henry. Uh, hello, Henry. I hope this grinder works better than the one you have and you won't have to shake it to get it to run. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's great how, you know, you guys pay such close attention to the video sometimes. I, uh, I'm i humbled that you pay so, such close attention. Thank you very much. It says, from Ernest McDonald. It's okay, I'll call you Ernie. Thanks a lot. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know I'm... I'm going to use this, right? Um, all the tools that I get from my subscribers, I use them in the video. And when I use them in the video, if I remember, I'll do a quick shout out. Uh, I really wish some of you guys had like businesses and Instagram pages that you want me to push out, you know? Not like I have a lot of subscribers, but uh, I get a decent amount of views, you know what I mean? So we're talking about 
people around the country and a lot of subscribers end up being in the same state, you know, and a lot of my subscribers have gotten in touch with other subscribers in the same state, you know, so it's, it's kind, of, kind of interesting like that. And if you have a business or something like that or a landscaping firm, right, you send me a gift or you buy a sticker, I shout you out, I shout your business out. And if somebody else is watching in the same state, they're like, oh, you know what? I need a new landscaper. I'll call this guy, you know, because he's a subscriber of Henry. So there's a referral vouching kind of a trust there. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what I'm saying? So if you guys have a business, uh, let me know when you send me stuff. I'll be happy to shout out your business as well. So anyway, I told the guy 150 for the Atlas snowblower, right? He's like, why don't we meet in the middle at 125? So I'm thinking to myself, $125 and practically giving the snowblower away, you know? But if we don't get any snow, it's all useless junk to me. I need to try to get something out of it, right? So I said, okay. He flaked on me today, as usual, very flaky. Anyway, I'm down to the nitty gritty, guys. Uh, I don't really have anything else left to do, believe it or not. Uh, I do have a Briggs V-Twin, which is kind of burnt, and it had a bent rod, which I just replaced the rod, but... I think there's a reason why it bent, right? So I might have to figure that out. I have this rebuilt Kohler Courage 19 that I did, right? But I need to switch out the cams because it can't, this cam doesn't have the um, ACR, compression release. And of course, I just took apart two Kohlers, so I got plenty of parts. So I might try to rebuild this again with the better parts. It has a cracked um, spacer between the carburetor and the... Uh, engine block which I need to fix and then I think I might have to do the redo the valves again because I did it backwards last time I have this Kohler command 12.5 that was off of the red snapper that I picked up uh, six months ago or so so I could use this for like a hauler or something in the future still I had a couple of trade trade um, inquiries on this but being that you know it's not really a priority uh, I might trade or do something with it like not soon but upcoming you know so today i'm gonna head to the backyard and i'll show you what i'm gonna do so i've got this hauler um got it from uh, nick from medford i believe i put one of my uh engines in there and this thing runs and drives and everything it just needs a deck right uh, i'm working on a deck trade with Nick Iardi. This one has the welded deck, you know, the deck that has Swiss cheese all over the place and I tried welding it, but it's on a decent tractor though. You know what I mean? Uh, this was a uh, LT2000 that I repainted Sunrise Red. It's a nice tractor, runs good too. Uh, I just need a, a new deck for this because it being a nice tractor, you gotta have a nice deck. You can't have a good tractor with a Swiss cheese deck, right? I might try to weld some more on that and kind of fix that deck in the future, but uh, I, I could use another deck. Actually, I could use two decks, right? You guys know about that? This this is the Atlas that I almost sold for 125 bucks. Still no bites on any snow blowers. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all my power handle stuff, even though we did get three attachments working, the real mower, the uh, snow hound, and the edger, right? That thing might be my next project uh, if it's not so cold. It is just so cold and it's gonna get colder next week. Uh, that's the uh, 17 horsepower 42 Scott, right? Uh, I actually have a I actually have a Kohler engine that's 17 horsepower also, but it needs some things, you know, some parts, which I'm not ready to buy yet. This one has a deck, so all it needs is an engine and a battery. And that could be uh, getting to work on that pretty soon. I have another hauler here. This is the uh, really bad condition one. very rusty as you know I put the seat on here right uh, tires all hold air I put the hood on here it came with no hood and um, no engine right so I was gonna put one of my uh, the, the free flathead engine that I had on this but I think Nick I already needs a hauler and uh, I might trade him for a deck I think he might have a craftsman deck so I'll trade this for a deck my other three snowblowers here, uh, the uh, 522, 
another 522 that's not self-propelled but power propelled and my trusty Toro Snow Commander that I just fixed the Magneto on. So now today I'm going to be working on painting a deck. As you know, I got a deck through a trade with my friend Victor Gaines. I'm going to drag it out of here. So here we go, as you can see, I've got the uh, deck that I got from Victor Gaines out of my shed. I wasn't going to work out until the spring, but uh, being that I don't have anything left to fix, uh, other than that John Deere, um, Scott's by John Deere tractor, uh, and also that uh, Kohler engine, uh, when it gets a little warmer I'll start working on that I think, um, but I might try to take it easy for the next few days. Uh, so look, I'm going to paint this deck black with this 98 cent quick color paint I have left because uh, I want to try to keep the uh, tractor as stock as possible even though this green does kind of match the uh, LT1000 hauler in the back, right? The deck is not supposed to be green, it's supposed to be black. So while I have 98 cents worth of paint, I'm just going to coat it uh, real quick with black. Um, Everything works. Blades split, spin freely. Victor actually sharpened the blades. It has the um, side discharge deflector and anti-scalp wheels, which is very good. They all work. Uh, and also, if you look at this, it does move freely. So. It's a cable driven PTO, which means the cable goes over here, connects onto this uh, stud here on this tensioner arm with a pin. You hook, the, um, you hook the spring on the cable onto here, and when you engage the PTO, it moves it back, engages the blades, puts tension on the belt. I need to find a belt as well as what's missing. That's right, when you engage the PTO, it engages the blades, but then what brings it back? There's nothing here that brings it back. This little slit here is made for a spring that connects onto that hole. So I need to find a spring with enough tension to pull this back when I need to disengage the uh, PTO lever. So I need a spring. I'm going to paint it black. And uh, what else did I just say? Oh, and a belt. I need to find a belt. So I'm going to spray it right now.
So that can of uh, black spray paint, 98 cents. It coated everything very nicely. Uh, had actually a little bit extra, so I went over it again. Looks way better now. Also uh, painted over the uh, side deflector chute. Looks really good. So I'm going to wait for this to dry. And then we're going to mount this on that green LT-1000 hauler I have in a backyard. And then all I'll need is one or maybe two, two more decks. You know, like I said, uh, you get there when you get there, right? I didn't go out and buy any. They just show up eventually, you know, I'm in no rush. In addition, I also pulled out these parts from my shed. Um, this is for the Snapper 1350 that I had. Uh, I picked off the street and uh, I got the engine off of it. It's the uh, Kohler 12.5 engine that I took off of it. Uh, I also found a spring for the return. When you engage the PTO, it goes here, the spring pulls it back. It's not exactly the right spring, but it works. As long as it gets that tension arm back into place again, that's all you need. It should be a thicker gauge one, but like I said, if it works, why not? So I need to find a belt. Uh, I have lots of belts in the back shed. So it's the next day. You ready for this? It's 18 degrees right now. It's about uh, 1130 in the morning. The coldest day of the year so far. Absolutely. Absolutely freezing. Uh, here is some really interesting news here for uh, local New York. The weatherman says that we might be getting four to ten inches on Monday night. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, we're going through a week of uh, very freezing temperatures. So uh, with the storm impending, that means powdery snow and a significant amount, maybe. Uh, yesterday, it was just too cold to be outside working. So once I got finished with the uh, painting of this deck, right, I thought there's no way this paint is going to dry for the remainder of the afternoon for me to install it. So I just scrapped it. So I figured I'd just do it today, you know? Let's test. How about that? I'm surprised because I have been in cold temperatures before where I painted something and it took like two days or three days for it to completely dry. But it seems like because that quick color, it's such a light coating of it, right? It wasn't very thick, you know, but it's enough to cover the green which is all I need, you know, and it feels like it's dry. So uh, even with it being so cold and miserable, right? I've got like three jackets on. <laughs> it's like Gore-Tex. It's Gore-Tex. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's really cold and I can't even feel my fingers. I've got the deck here in the backyard. And I pulled out the uh, LT-1000 hauler. Uh, I forgot, but the PTO cable here has been cut. So I need to go find a PTO cable. I have to first remove the old one. Looks like the hangers are all here. And when you engage the button, it does both come down like that. So that's all I need is for the hangers to be existing and it for it to go up and down. I do need to get this cable. I think I have two of them. One brand new, one used. There's the pulley. And the front part, those two things there, they clip onto the two on the bracket, the two holes on the bracket in the front. This is a hydro gear. But it's a five speed. 
wait a minute, it's not a five, it's a hydro gear, it should be hydrostatic, but it has a five speed thing here. And it does have to disengage. That's why I was able to pull it out like that. So let me go find a cable. I was able to find an extra cable that I had from another tractor. It goes on like that. Put it on upside down, clip it, and rotate it down. This thing goes into this little hole. Doesn't look like it fits though. Oh, you know what? It doesn't. This goes over like that. There's supposed to be a washer there. I need to get a washer. And then you put a pin through the hole. This part here goes inside here. As you can see, I also found a belt. I have about four or five of them. Uh, I believe on a lot of LT1000 models, the mower deck belt is the same length as the drive belt. It's, it differs on different models, but I've seen a few that are exactly the same. So I'll try this one. It looks like it's routed correctly. V shape to the V pulley, flat part to the flat idlers. This is the tension arm pulley along with my spring and it's routed this way. This part goes on to the double stack. It looks about, it looks about right. I'm gonna now remove this cable here. It's easier to engage the handle so that you can actually see where it is. So there's two clips there that I have to take out. Got the wire out, the cable. It's been cut. I'm going to fish the new one in there. I'm going to do it from the bottom. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the clip on there. And now when you engage it, when you put it back down again so that's what engages the belt and that spring on there will pull it back out so we've got the cable on there now I'm going to install the uh, deck Down here is a hole. I'm gonna stick this wire through the hole. Route it to the top. Get the clip through that hole there. And clip it onto that little thing right there I'm trying to show you guys exactly what I'm doing it's hard to get my hand in there because I my jacket is so thick <laughs> I routed it through here and there I just pulled it so that the clips mount lower this hand And this actually has to be on the other side. It's tough for me, for me to record for you guys to see, but you get the idea.
So there we go. A successful install of a deck. I'm gonna go over what I did here. Right here, cable goes into there. Put an R clip in there. This goes to the uh, spring that goes on top of the stud. This hanger was mounted to this with an R clip on the back, R clip over here. The front uh, rods attached to the front bracket there. You should have put I should have put a washer in there, but I couldn't find one that fit the uh, diameter of that that thing. Same goes for the other side. As long as it doesn't come off, it's fine. Over here in the back, it defers a little bit because you have this cross hanger bar that's like a ZZ top shape. That goes to this part over here. This controls the back sway. Our clip attachment over here to the deck. This one was attached to the back of that already. And the belt is looped around the uh, double stack pulley. So it's really a very easy. As a matter of fact, the LT1000 is, a pr is probably one of the easier lawn tractors to work on, which is why there's so many of them. It was a very good design because it was very user friendly. As you can see, it uh, moves up and down freely and nicely, and they're both even on both sides. So this is very cool, very happy. Uh, I didn't expect to have to change the uh, PTO engagement cable. I thought it was good, but uh, I'm lucky that I had one or two. So uh, this is good. Uh, I could use one of these things to make it complete, but you know, it's fine. Uh, I got this from my local friend uh, Mark from East Northport. He gave me this al uh, along with the uh, Poulon PXT. And uh, it has some crazy yellow wheels on the back too, but you know what? It kind of matches the uh, hood, you know what I mean? It's a decent tractor. I think I put my own seat on here. And this is, uh, let's get the serial number here about what year it is. Okay, so this was right here, serial number. March 12th of 03. So this, this is a 2003 model hydrostatic LT1000. And uh, I got it without a deck, now I have a deck. A nice deck too, thanks to uh, Victor Gaines, who came over and I swapped him a uh, non-running Bolin's push mower for it. Thanks Victor, looks like it uh, is gonna be great. And then when I engage the PTO, let's see, well let's lower this so you can see. When I engage the PTO, let's see if it puts pressure on the uh, belt does see so that way the belt is nice and tight to engage the blades then I disengage it hmm the spring is supposed to pull it back remember I told you that the spring might not be strong enough uh, you know what in the springtime when I run this thing I might have to change that spring two seconds you know but if it's running it may be different you know because it vibrates a little bit you know, when you're running it and uh, when you disengage it, the vibration may just pull it back anyway. So we'll see how it goes in the spring. But uh, I was running out of things to do because it's been so cold lately. I haven't gotten any new equipment yet. Nobody's really in the mood to be listing things and grabbing things. So I haven't gotten anything. But like I said, we're, we're running into a possible snowstorm coming up. I've got an electric snowblower that I need to review, so I'll try that. Uh, this is the uh, Craftsman 5.524 snowblower that had low compression. I grinded the valves and now it seems to run well. So I might pull this out if the snow gets out of control for that electric one. And uh, I'll try this one out too. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode of the second New York Long Island snowstorm cleanup. So for now, um, this is the uh, LT1000 that we put a deck on after we repainted it and got some arc clips and a new uh, PTO engagement cable we put on here as well as a belt. 
So this thing is actually ready to go um, in the spring, which is very cool. Well, that's it. I gotta get out of here because it's freezing. We've got this LT1000. It has a new deck now, new deck uh, PTO engagement cable, as well as a new belt. Well, old belt, new to me. So in the spring, we'll see if this thing fires up and mows as it should. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell that way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye